Hi, my name is Gary Emerald, and my friend Jerry Boschman, author of a new book, Hope for All, stopped by with his wonderful wife Denise to uh, say hello and to spend a little time with us. And it's Father's Day. I'm a father, have a lovely daughter, and Jerry has three lovely daughters. And he began his uh, wonderful book, Hope for All, with the story of a daughter. And I would like to read that story. I'm starting to break up just reading the story. It's a 16-year-old girl. She obviously has a father. Let me just read it. Dear Jerry, I'm 16 years old. My mother is a Christian, and my dad may not be. I'm really not sure. My whole life I've been taught of this eternal hell that Jesus is saving me from, and it honestly has been the biggest stumbling block in my entire faith. I could not grasp the fact that God loved me so much, but was completely okay with my dad suffering in hell forever. I would lie awake at night in tears because I was so afraid of hell, and that the people I loved, and possibly myself, could be going to hell. I was so unsettled by this fact that I would get so scared I could not even talk to God. About three weeks ago, I saw your book lying on a coffee table and started reading it. I was up till three in the morning reading it, and I was so amazed and infatuated by it, I couldn't put it down. Never before had I even heard the thought that hell was not eternal, and it was the most amazing thing that I had ever read. Over the next two weeks or so, I kept reading and highlighting it. I actually found myself turning off the TV and reading the book. That's a big deal because I hate to read. Thank you so much, Jerry, for writing this book. I honestly had never loved God, and now I love him so much it's crazy. This book has changed my life, and I'm so thankful. I feel it's a message too great to be kept a secret. That was... Uh, cry of a 16-year-old girl. And here's a cry of, a, uh, of an old man, a seasoned Christian, a scholar. Listen to the heart of this grieving Albert Barnes, the author of the famed Barnes Notes. In the distress and anguish of my own spirit, I could see not one ray of light to disclose to me the reason why men and women must suffer to all eternity. I have never seen a particle of light that has given a moment's ease to my tortured mind, nor have I an explanation or a thought which would bring relief to you. I confess that I looked on a world of sinners and of sufferers, upon deathbeds and graveyards, upon the world's world of woe filled with people who will suffer forever. When I see my friends, my parents, my family, my fellow citizens, when I look upon the whole human race, when I feel that God alone can save, and yet he does not, I am struck dumb. It's all dark, dark, dark to my soul, and I cannot disguise it. It's all dark, 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 he says. How tragic, this compassionate man who dedicated his life serving God, but due to his mistaken identity of God's nature and judgment, he was blinded to the great depth and scope of God's unfailing love for all people. Jerry Boschen wrote this book, Hope for All, Ten Reasons God's Love Prevails. And uh, we've been spending the last two or three days talking about this message of the Father's nature and character and his plan of the redemption of the whole world. My friend Jerry Boschman. Thank you, Gary, for sharing that. Um, I've really been enjoying my time with Gary and his wife, Michelle. They've become really good friends over the years, and, and really it's all around this message that we got to know each other. You know, I used to be a missionary in Africa, and I won't go into all the details, but uh, I, I went on a on a journey, on a quest for truth, because I heard about this message. And I had a friend of mine who, who was radically changed by this whole idea that this book and what Gary's talking about. And so I did some research and I ran into Gary and Michelle's website, tentmaker.org. 
and I'll tell you, it just was such a resource for me. I was able to run into ancient writings, modern writings of people who have really wrestled and sought and um, weren't satisfied with the conventional idea that God would punish his children forever and ever. And so I just want to thank you, Gary, publicly, if I can, for the awesome sacrifice and all that you've given to make this website um, available to the world. It's, a, it's not your typical website. It's more of an encyclopedia of information. Most of the key writings that I read are available on that site. Why, why do I feel that God's love prevails? First of all, I would say that God is love and love never fails. And thus, God never fails in his love. And, 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 and he had also said that God is love and he's a consuming fire. And so, we, so there's this thing in scripture that I think that has made it difficult for, to, for us to see the awesome majesty of who our Father is and what his promises to all of us are. And, and it's not very difficult to see if we would only peel some of the layers over this whole subject of God's judgment and the warnings that we see in scripture because sadly they've been misunderstood so much so that we our eyes and hearts have been veiled from the true character of our Heavenly Father along with all his wonderful promises God is love and God is a consuming fire and what does he consume in his metaphorical fires? He consumes all that is not love in us. There's a wonderful promise that all my life, Gary, I just never really saw it. And, and it's right there in John 12, 32. And, and it's coming from the words of Jesus. And he says, and if I be lifted up from the earth, signifying by what death he would die in the next verse, on the cross, I will draw all men to myself. John also said a little earlier in the same book, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. The angel appearing to shepherds in the field in the morning of Jesus' birth said, Behold, I bring you glad tidings of great joy, which is for all people. I mean, when you start realizing what some of these radical statements are saying in the scripture, in light of an understanding that God's warnings and judgments come from a father heart with the intention to, to transform us, to correct us, to help us understand what love is and what love is not. And, and I, I've come to see that in his judgments, he allows us to experience the consequences of our unloving ways. That's an amazing thing. Paul said that, oh, how unsearchable are his ways and his judgments past finding out. It's not clear cut so much as in metaphorical language, but not so with his promises. His promises are straightforward and they just spell it all out. Gary, can I share uh, just a few sure. of his precious yeah. promises? This book promise to bring it back. I will. Okay. <laughs> That's my copy. <laughs> well, I, I'm not going to read the whole book to you, but I just want to highlight just a few key points. I hope I won't take more than five minutes to do this, just to give you an idea of why I'm so passionate about this message. And since we're talking about the book and I have it in my hand, I might as well just turn to it. There's 10, I'm looking at 10 key points, which I refer to as anchors. I call them anchors because that's what they are to me. An anchor is a thing affording stability to fix firmly a source of confidence. I'll just summarize them real quick. Um, I'm sorry, I, I won't take all the time to explain them now because each of the anchors go into that in great detail. There's 10 anchors. First, it's hope in history, hope in fire, hope in judgment, hope in ancient Greek, hope in death, hope in justice, hope in our Father, hope in God's nature, hope in God's promises, and hope in prophecy. Let's just look at hope in history real briefly from the very beginning. We look at hope prior to creation, and I'll give you just a few promises to, to anchor your heart in just for the moment. 
Grace was given to us in Christ Jesus before time began. Redeemed with the precious blood of Christ, foreordained before the foundation of the world. Jesus was the lamb slain from the foundation of the world, and there's more. There's no plan B with God. Creation from our Father was something precious in God's heart and plan for us all. And it started before Adam and Eve and all that we understand of creation ever took place. Now beyond that, let me share just a few of the wonderful all promises of God that have really impacted my life. All the families of the earth shall be blessed. All the nations of the earth shall be blessed. All the ends of the earth shall turn to the Lord. All the families of the nations shall worship God. All those who go down to the dust shall bow down before God. All flesh will come to God. He provides atonement. All kings shall fall down before him. All nations shall serve him. All nations shall come, worship, and glorify God. A God full of compassion and gracious, long-suffering, and abundant in mercy. All the kings of the earth shall praise him when they hear the words of his mouth. All he has made will receive his compassion. That reminds me of that day when Jesus saw the crowds. He says he was moved with compassion because they were distressed and dispirited like sheep without a shepherd. He said, pray the Lord of the harvest. He would send out laborers into his harvest field. Our Lord's heart longs and, and grieves and hurts. His heart was moved with compassion when he came to see these two dear sisters that he loved so much, when they had lost their brother, and, and he traveled for days to get to them, to bring them some comfort, and when he saw them in their grief, the shortest verse of the Bible says, Jesus wept. That's our God. He weeps. He loves us with an everlasting love. He loves all of us like his children. And I know there's a teaching out there that refers to Paul's teaching on adoption, trying to imply that, well, well you'll have to be adopted. But in this book, I will go into that in, in considerable detail to show that what the Roman meaning and what Paul's understanding of adoption actually meant in the five times that he referred to it. You see, God is our Father, first and foremost. He loves us as a Father. And, and so when he corrects us, disciplines us, it's because he loves us. Isaiah said, when your judgments are in the earth, the inhabitants of the world learn righteousness. He, um, he said, the prophet said, um, you have appointed them for judgment, O rock. You have mocked them for correction. And Paul, David said in the Psalms that you brought us through affliction and through fire that we might come to rich fulfillment in Psalm 66. So affliction and fire, metaphorical fire, of course, brings rich fulfillment. You see, if we really look at the, what, what the scriptures are teaching about God's, the way he, he deals with us in our unlovingness to teach us his love, um, we understand that we must experience to some degree, to some point, how our lives have impacted others. And sometimes there's a, it's uncomfortable. It's not always comfortable. And that was, that's very clearly laid out in, in, in Paul's um, epistle to, to the Hebrews, uh, well, whoever wrote the, the book of Hebrews, where he's talking about um, God disciplines us as our fathers do for our profit that we may partake in his holiness, in that way, in all that he is. So, once we understand Jesus, listen to what Jesus said right at the beginning at the, in the Sermon on the Mount. He said, and with what judgment you judge, you will be judged, and with the measure you use, it will be measured. And it's because we need to experience some of the, some of the pain we have experienced in order for us to understand what love is, to understand, and, and, and it's like a reality check. This a whole concept that God would torment his loving creation forever and ever and ever whatever without any hope, like that Bible scholar was tormented in his soul, dark, 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 all to his soul, and, and that and that young girl was tormented in her heart about she couldn't even open her Bible anymore because she was afraid because of this 
flawed understanding of God's nature and His judgment. I believe that we can fully understand His promises, His all promises, some of which I just shared, once we understand what His judgments are really all about. Now, I can accept those all promises. I don't have to say that all doesn't mean all. You know, that's one of the first things that people will come back to us with. You know, they tend to, to come back. And I, I, and I have this question at the end of the book, and someone will come up and say, how do you know all means everyone in God's reconciliation of all promises? All means everyone unless the context implies otherwise. Does that make sense? Dr. Keith DeRose, who's a philosophy professor who specializes in, specializes in languages at Yale University, wrote this. He says, when the domain is limited, there has to be some fairly clear clue about what that limited domain is. He says, the biblical writers aren't so incompetent as to mean some specially restricted class that doesn't clearly present itself. So I believe that when we read God's all promises in context, as they are, I cannot see how all does not mean all. He is the propitiation for our sins, said the Apostle John, and not for ours only, but for the sins of the whole world. And when he says, and not for ours only, and for the sins of the whole world, in the context of which he wrote it. It's very difficult for me, now that I understand the purposes of our Father and His judgment, to even for a moment entertain the thought that all doesn't mean all. It's, it's amazing when you see it. Jesus said, he that has Hears to hear, let him hear. So I pray that God gives you and everyone who, who is hungry to know God, to know the purpose of life, to know why they're here, that they would understand who our loving Father is and experience His great love, understanding in the right way how He... he um, takes care of us in teaching us what we need to learn about love. Thank you. You know, Jerry and I both uh, are parents. I have a beautiful daughter. He's got three lovely daughters. And I have a son who, uh, who passed away. And we are mortals. We're regular old dads who have warts and bald spots and we're not perfect people we've made a lot of mistakes in our parenting but let me tell you something I love my daughter <laughs> and Jerry loves his daughter and as imperfect as I am and as a natural dad as angry as I can get and stupid as I can get I would never take my child and separate that child from my heart, from my conscience, from my presence, and put that child in a state of what traditional Christianity says, eternal damnation, a place of eternal separation, a place of eternal anguish and terror and torment, physically, spiritually, and soulishly, in my heart, as an atheist, I couldn't do that sort of thing. And now as a Christian, as one who knows the love of the Father, mm. who's tasted of the goodness of the kingdom to come, there's just no way that I could do that. Mm. And for us, we mortals, to say that our Heavenly Father, who's trillions of times more loving and wise and powerful and patient, to cast hundreds of millions or billions of his own souls, his own spirits, his own children to eternal separation, to terror for all eternity, 
Today, for me, it's inconceivable. And millions upon millions of Christians are waking up from mm. a gospel of terror mm. to a gospel of hope mm. to the victorious gospel of Jesus Christ. Mm. Mm. Jesus said, mm. love your enemies. And he proved it instead of killing the, those who took him to the cross, he allowed them to nail him to the cross. And on the cross, he said, Father, mm. Father, Abba, mm. Father, mm. forgive them, mm. for they do not know what they're doing. Mm. That's my father. Mm. That's my daughter's father. That's Jerry Boschman's father. Mm. And that's your father. That's right. And if you don't know him as that, mm. please pick up Jerry okay. Boschman's book. You can go to Amazon.com or his website, mm -hmm. Hope for All Fellowship. That's correct. Dot com. com. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, and if you don't have the financial means or whatever, you tell Jerry, and I <laughs> guarantee you, <laughs> he'll send you that book absolutely free. Mm -hmm. Please, pick up the book. Mm 